Hello, hello, um, and welcome to the panel. And I'm a Knowledge Exchange Manager for Southwest Creative Technology Network, or SWICTON, as um, we often call it. Um, I'm a white woman in her 50s. I've got brown eyes, uh, gray white shoulder length hair, and my, pronoun my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm joined to my left by a British Sign Language interpreter, Tim Griffin. Tim's pronouns are he, him. He is a white man in his early 40s with short, mousy brown hair, and he's wearing a plain black dress shirt. First of all, apologies if my sound's going in and out. I think it's my internet connection. Um, I do apologize for that if that is the case. Um, but anyway, to introduce you to the hybrid hubs, um, it'll take the form of a, present, um, a couple of presentations followed by a Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, please put those in the chat. Um, hybrid Hubs is a working paper commissioned by Swicton. It explores how hybrid virtual platforms can support the reorganization of spaces and disrupt existing typologies and forms of working, focusing on an ecology of openness. Understand. Um, the paper is being authored by Collaborative Futures, a collective of creative technologists, architects, activists, designers, psychologists, dancers, neuroscientists, um, researchers, um, working across lots of different industries. Joining them is Professor Mike Phillips from the University of Plymouth, who's one of the co-investigators on Swicton. And he's going to be starting off by talking about hybrid domes. Um, this is a sister project or a fork of the Hybrid Hub Hubs initiative. And it aims to create an international network of full dome environments in these in one place. Uh, over to you, Mike. Hopefully, he will appear very shortly. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, yes, uh, Mike Phillips here. Um, just to say, I'm a middle aged white male um, whose limpid complexion is blending into the white background. Uh, of that wall behind me. It's kind of like a weird chroma key, actually. Um, just noticed that. Uh, so I'm going to share my slides. I, I'm just doing a quick insert here because um, this is a project uh, which uh, we um, used one of our Swapton development grants with at Plymouth uh, with a Real Ideas organization, which is a um, social uh, project in Plymouth and across Cornwall. Uh, and particularly around a new development uh, called the Market Hall in Devonport. And I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, here we go. Hopefully you can see these slides. Um, so what you can see here is a, uh, a an old building that used to be behind a wall uh, around the Devonport dockyards, which was, uh, when the wall was knocked down, it was released uh, to uh, the council for a development, which um, Rio have taken on and they've converted it to a digital hub, which um, has now got the innovation of a large full dome environment. Uh, this is quite a cool thing to have uh, anywhere, but especially in a place like Plymouth. Um, as you can see here, there's a structure that the building itself is not open yet to the public, obviously for uh, COVID reasons. Uh, but we have been uh, involved in some of the uh, technical shows here. Um, and what it is is a 15 meter full dome environment. Uh, and uh, this will be used for development purposes, for showcasing work, uh, festivals, um, and generally having a really cool time in. Uh, it's an immersive environment. In fact, the full dome can be uh, described as a shared virtual reality. Um, it existed as a, as a sort of vehicle, a media vehicle, way before virtual reality systems uh, in the kind of head manager display type uh, were available. Uh, so it has a, a huge and deep um, history to it uh, for all sorts of uh, religious and psychedelic experiences. The dome in Plymouth is particularly interesting. It's inspired by a dome in Montreal, uh, which uh, 
was developed uh, by an organization called SAT, the Society of Art and Technology. Uh, this dome here has a 19.1 sound system, there's 19 speakers with a woofer on top, uh, and has an innovation of two projectors, two 4K projectors, which gives an overall 4K uh, image within the dome. Um, each is equipped with a, a fisheye lens. So this is a really cool innovation. Most domes have kind of like five uh, projectors. The dome in SAT has 16 projectors. Uh, so this is a really cool um, kind of innovation around the use of this uh, fisheye technology uh, within this full dome environment. What we've done is to create a network, I mean, it's an existing network, but we've drawn on this network to advise this project uh, to basically make the uh, Market Hall Dome a kind of center of uh, this kind of networked innovation. Full domes have obviously like most cinematic type uh, spaces, and I don't like to talk about full dome as a cinema because it has a completely different set of media conventions to it. But as a space where people go, um, sit down and experience things, um, it has struggled, obviously, uh, for people to access these spaces. And innovative areas like uh, the Full Dome Festival in um, Jena in, in Germany has uh, done some really cool stuff with networked um, immersive experiences uh, for their festival in 2020. Uh, but we're also drawing on uh, the Angervant in Vienna, uh, Full Dome UK, which is a biennial festival, the NSC Creative, which is up in Leicester, Guy and Over, who have been uh, instrumental in many of these initiatives, and also SAT, as I said, in uh, Montreal. Uh, and we've drawn on those to define this project. We've been working on developing this hybrid hub uh, through a, a group of um, individuals, artists, uh, coders, um, producers, to look at how we can bring, uh, how we can create this kind of superimposed virtual space of full domes. Uh, we've looked at objects as sort of totems, which could be located in each of the areas to create a kind of network of objects, um, a kind of internet of things idea. Uh, but I've actually now moved to uh, the idea of effectively superimposing these virtual spaces into one space, which uh, all of the collaborating venues can now take part in. This will be done through the use of uh, game engine technology, probably Unreal, uh, and it'll draw on uh, the idea of literally taking one of these virtual spaces, placing it on top of another one, creating a kind of psychometric architecture where the memory of each of these um, distributed um, places that are actually in different time zones uh, can share assets, can share audiences, and can share ideas in a dialogue around uh, these, this kind of convergence. It draws on a history of, um, and here on the left here you've got uh, Roy Ascot, uh, project from the 80s, where, which looked at distributed authorship. And it also picks up on some of the strands that come through innovators like uh, but Mr. Fuller, who had a vision for the full dome, not just as a location-based venue, but as something which was part of an international network, which was streaming and dynamically viewable and picturable and radio to all the world. Uh, this idea that uh, the dome itself becomes a, a unique space for um, engaging audiences and communicating, not just science, but cultural um, initiatives as well. So I'm gonna stop talking there. That is uh, the end of my little pitch. And um, over to uh, Molly and the Collaborative Futures team. Thank you. Hi, um, Fiona, can you share your screen? Thanks. Oh, goodness, sorry. Okay. Hi, okay, cool, thanks. So we're Collaborative Futures, and um, we are just gonna take a brief moment to introduce ourselves. My name is Molly Claypool. I am a white woman with um, brown hair in my mid thirties, and my pronouns are she, her. Um, everyone else will introduce themselves in the next couple of slides. Um, we're Collaborative Futures, Fiona, next slide. And we are, as Rachel said, um, a, a very multi-institutional core team. So we work across um, automated architecture, um, uh, limited and our labs, which is based in the Bartlett, um, interactive architecture lab at UCL, 
um, the School of Architecture, the Institute of Behavioral Neuroscience, BMAID, which is Bartlett Manufacturing and Design Exchange, and Pratt Institute School of Architecture in New York, and Ars Electronia, Electronica based in Austria. And we're working across a number of different disciplines. We, um, this core team here today is primarily from an architecture and design and social sciences background, but we also have people in our team in creative tech, computer science, participatory design, neuroscience and experimental psychology, activism of all kinds, um, choreography and dance and integrated body design. Next slide, Fiona. Thank you. So as I said, my name is Molly Claypool. Um, I'm one of the co-directors of Our Labs at the Bartlett and a director of Our. Um, I was previously an automation fellow in Swickton and last year ran a project in the Automation Prototype Award called the Collaborative Construction Platform. And I came into Collaborative Futures um, uh, Collaborative for Futures kind of grew out of a conversation that myself and Fiona, who will introduce herself in a minute, um, had as part of a working group that I was chairing at Bartlett School of Architecture as part of our COVID response. Um, so this has really been initiated through those initial conversations that started exactly a year ago, which is pretty amazing to think about how this has grown. Um, Claire? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, so I'm Claire McAndrew. I am a white woman in my late 30s, shall we say. <laughs> um, I have short, dark brown hair um, and I wear glasses um, with clear frames. Uh, so as, yeah, as Molly said, um, so I'm a senior research fellow in public engagement based at the Bartlett School of Architecture. And I'm also one of the co-directors of our labs. Um, at UCL. So I'm a social scientist, uh, broadly working within architectures and practices of care, focusing on the possibilities of design and digital innovation within the built environment, really for kind of transformative social and cultural effect. And I kind of feel like this dual positioning has informed kind of the work, the collaborations that I've been involved in around digital innovations within the built environment that seek to, uh, have gone through a whole spectrum of things like re-engaging awareness in the protection of public spaces through to countering the banality of kind of non-spaces through to nurturing new forms and frameworks of kind of agency in response to the housing crisis. So my work's very much um, focused around new frameworks for participation, drawing upon kind of contemporary theory, research, debate around architecture, technology, community, and public engagement, really as a way to kind of enact more kind of careful um, capacities. Um, over to Fiona. Um, hello, my name is Fiona Tisch. I am a white woman also in her late 30s. I have long, uh, long uh, reddish blonde hair, and I also wear glasses. I am an architect and a neuroscientist, and I work between the Interactive Architecture Lab and the Institute of Behavioral Neuroscience at UCL. My interest, um, as you can see on the, the slide, lies in a, in a bunch of things that span architecture and neuroscience and uh, experimental psychology. I have a strong interest in, in the body and in embodiment, and I also have um, a, a large interest in a large portion of my work that deals with collaboration in terms of working across different disciplines and how we can actually um, collaborate with one another and challenge the notion of bounded disciplines, which crucially integrates not just uh, conversations in kind of project specific interaction, but actually in the in knowledge production and in working across time and learning and producing knowledge and um, information with one another, which also means knowing kind of how how disciplines operate rather than just the knowledge that disciplines produce. I also have a background in dance and choreography quite a few years ago and this also ties in with my work um, across the kind of interest in body in space. We're, we also have a few people who aren't here today so we might um, talk about them later but I'll hand over to Mahalia to introduce herself next. Hello, um, my name is Mahalia Henry Richards. Um, I am a black woman in her early 30s. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, and my, my background is, uh, I'm a designer, but I have a background in interior architecture, um, performance and digital design. And I'm really interested in merging these disciplines and kind of working in a kind of experimental, playful way. 
Um, my most recent work was actually um, at the Interactive Architecture Lab, so very recently finished my master's and I was um, kind of uh, working in response to the pandemic and this kind of situation of being um, separate and working on kind of how and researching how we can collaborate um, in new ways in the, within this context. So we're also um, joined in the core team by Alice Wewell, who's a lecturer in BMAID at, at the Bartlett School of Architecture at UCL. And she is um, someone with a background in women's wear and performative wearables. Um, and so she really brings this kind of more tangible materiality um, practice to the work that we're doing. Um, our other two core teams are from Pratt Institute with Harriet Harris, who is a dean at Pratt, and Ariane Harrison, um, who both have um, formulated a research group called Inclusive Oncologies. And what they're working on at Pratt is thinking about how do you develop new kinds of design pedagogies that really respond to and adapt to um, issues around climate and social justice. And um, we're also working with Crystal Bauer from Ars Electronica who's really thinking about how we can um, understand new ways of collaborating and experimenting in order to sort of challenge dominant cultural protocols and pedagogies. Um, next slide, I think. Okay, so this kind of follows on from the, the previous slide. So these are some of the core team members, just some examples of the work that we've done. So um, maybe I'll leave Molly and Claire to talk a little bit about, about their work and I'll speak to myself and Harriet um, with Ariane in this sense. So the, the work that I've put up here really kind of illustrates some of the things I was already pointing out that are really important to the work that um, Collaborative Futures, especially within the context of the Hybrid Hub project, is interested in. And that is thinking about um, bodies in technology and how bodies might interact in technology. And so I've put three examples here of, kind of research projects working with dancers and choreographers looking at different perspectives on, spa in, on space. So this is the, the top project where we were exploring how, um, how we might use shifts in perspective and having an understanding of yourself in a space in relationship to others where you're not inhabiting the space from your first person point of view and how that changes your interaction and also um, the kind of um, the role that you see yourself playing and kind of notions of agency and the way that you would see yourself as part of this system. Um, the center slide then really looks into using technologies on the body and how we might use different sensory input and therefore different kind of interactive potentials and output within um, both physical and a digital virtual environment. So going into the, the world of um, extended environments here. And the, the kind of the last image was uh, a project that students of uh, mine did at the Interactive Architecture Lab looking at learning environments. This was for primary school kids to kind of give them um, knowledge of kind of uh, of chemistry and so they go into this world and be kind of kind of shrunk down and so it was a jump in scale but it meant that the the knowledge that is often kind of presented in a very abstract way that kids have to have to deal with was um, communicated to them through the body it was interactive it was something that they could actually grasp and play with and therefore um, construct a completely different understanding and a different approach to understanding very abstract knowledge in terms of Harriet and Ariane's work, we've put a few um, images here of their work in inclusive technologies and pedagogy, both in terms of written output, as in book publications, but then also in immersive installations um, in, uh, in an exhibition setting. Right, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the work that we've done in our. So one of the um, approach, we've been developing a methodology with NOLAS Media Center that's around how do you um, co-produce in a way that keeps the value that's created within the community itself, or the community that is co you are co-creating with? So we're really trying to think about new organizational models, new participatory models, and how we can begin to utilize this intersection between architecture, technology, and community to really formulate new ideas around structures of care, um, and how we can be we can begin to democratize participation in architectural production. So. The examples there on the, on the far left of the screen are images from our project Block West and the collaborative construction platform, where we utilize some of the, the products and systems that we've been developing to begin to, um, to begin to really think through how we begin to keep the value that was created in the design process into the community itself in the long term in the West. And this project is now beginning to scale up into other environments and has a lot of intersection with the way that we're thinking about how we engage with um, people as part of the Hybrid Hubs project, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. 
Uh, and I'm just going to say a few words um, about uh, the work here that I've been undertaking um, with Professor Paul Sermon at uh, the University of Brighton. So this was a project um, back in 2013, 2014, um, where we were HRC Unbox Lab uh, Fellows, and we spent um, an intensive uh, 10 week, uh, 10, 10 week, 10 day period out at the National Institute of Design in Ahmedabad. And that was really about thinking um, about uh, future cities. And we were really interested in thinking about um, what these hybrid spaces could look like. Um, so we ended up focusing on the housing crisis and connecting um, two cities, so the housing crisis in London with the housing crisis in um, Delhi, um, bringing those cities into conversation, but starting to think about how can we, so taking as its starting point, like how can we think about the internet differently? What would that look like? How can we think about it in a much more embodied way? How can we think about the spaces that we live and work in, which are very small? The three, this project was called Three by Four, and it took that, that three by four meter space um, from the fact that in cities such as Delhi, when um, informal settlements are moved from the center of the city to the periphery, they're often given a three by four meter space. So we were asking questions of like, well, what does that mean psychologically? What does that mean spatially? What does that mean for your experience? And we invited people to upload images of what a three by four meter space meant to them. Um, in both cities, both at the South Bank Centre and um, at Coge um, Studios, which is an artist studios um, in one of the uh, informal settlements in Delhi. But people could also download them and then they could create these hybrid realities between two cities that combined experiences um, in kind of new, interesting, um, different kind of playful, playful ways. Okay, next slide. I guess I'll talk over. Yeah, I guess I'll talk over this video whilst it's playing. So this is my uh, graduate project that I uh, I did with uh, in collaboration with my colleague uh, Stephen Henderson, uh, and we were basically responding to this uh, this new kind of uh, context of being a designer, being a person, uh, working, collaborating, um, in whilst socially or physically distant in a in a pandemic. And so we obviously didn't really know how to do this. So we kind of took this kind of experiment, experimental approach to the ways in which we built this uh, world, which we called the playground. And basically we tried to craft um, what we called a hybrid space where we kind of com combining elements of digital experience and our physical experience um, and trying to explore different ways in which we could kind of um, feel some of these visceral qualities that are more kind of associated with our physically situated um, lives. Um, so we we kind of set up this virtual game space that kind of gives an individual the space to interact in different kinds of ways. There's room to express yourself in, in, in more ways than just kind of language or words. Uh, we as designers acted as a kind of interface between the physical and digital and basically the whole entire thing was this kind of experimental playground in which we tried to um, really delve into what what a hybrid space might be and how we can move forward as designers working in a kind of more hybridized way. Um, yeah. So in the, in the kind of spirit of collaboration, it's uh, not just us um, that we've introduced today, but we actually have a large international network that is growing and that anyone who has an interest in uh, is welcome to kind of get in touch and ask to join us. Uh, so just these are some of the, the examples of people that we're working with beyond the core team. So obviously Watershed and Swickton. Um, we have people from the Institute of Education, people at other universities like the University of Innsbruck, Iowa State University, University of Michigan, Rice University, the University of Canterbury, SciArc. We also work um, with people in industry. 
So we have folks at the uh, audience labs at the Royal Opera House in London. We have people in architecture practice, Kopf Himmelblau um, is what they are one of our collaborators. We have people um, working in places like the Recollective. We have people in cultural institutions like the National Gallery. And then also very important to the kind of um, the interest that we have people working in uh, in movement, choreography, dance, performance. So we have Studio Wayne McGregor. We're also working with Now West uh, Media Center and um, hopefully you in the future. So do get in touch if you want to join our network. Uh, okay, so over to me. So uh, this body of work has, has really been driven by a series of questions around our experiences of digital platforms. What is lacking? Um, the values that ought to form the basis for thinking about more hybrid platforms. And so, you know, some of these questions have included things like how do we maximize serendipitous moments of interaction that lead to new dialogue and collaboration? You know, there's a real sense of things being kind of orchestrated within digital environments for collaboration and networking. Um, questions as well about um, how our online presence can act as a kind of digital corridor to connect our different physical spaces to, to one another. And um, we've spoken, for instance, as a group, a bit about the importance of materiality and how that's a part of forming one's identi um, identity and how that can start to be pulled through into digital space. Um, and of course, the challenging question of, you know, how do we explore the feel and the experience of collaborating between a digital and a physical world? You know, and what could emerge that just didn't seem possible before, you know, with all that we have learned over the last year? And then of course, um, underscoring these questions how do we really properly consider accessibility and inclusion across? physical and digital spaces. Uh, next slide, please. So our approach um, to considering these questions has really been kind of led by the kind of big list <laughs> below, um, which is, is, you know, we, we, we really want to be having meaningful conversations about collaboration that moves across um, a wide variety, both research, you know, wide variety of practices, is focused on knowledge exchange between academia and industry as well. Um, but it's also been led by questions of how to reorganize spaces and disrupt those kind of existing typologies or forms of working. You know, how can we start to enable much more kind of horizontal and participatory kind of ways of working? Um, I think certainly, um, one of the bit that the early conversations was about you know we really need to be focusing on these new ecologies of openness radical inclusion cooperation exploration understanding empowerment all of those things as we start to think about what a platform could be or might be or what those values might be that challenge um and allow for kind of serendipitous chance encounters um i know you know there's also uh, the real need to create a foundation for equity of access when we're thinking about these new forms of social um innovation um so you know as, as well as these areas there's of course kind of technical and experiential challenges that fit around this you know how do we start to build what we could describe as the connective tissue across a range of activities and interests. How do we explore kind of more varied sensory capabilities to allow the subtleties of everyday interaction and remote communication, which often does seem to get lost, as well as kind of cross-modal and cross-media uh, connections. And how can hybrid spaces really start to support the sharing of ideas um, that are in development in a multi-directional and associative way. You know, how might we do that? Um, and then other kind of areas of interest for us are to explore the potential for association rule learning to support the identification of relatedness across interests and machine learning to 
kind of start to aid that process of interpersonal communication and work capabilities. Um, and then finally, um, but not least, you know, um, how do we start to build a foundation of care to enable consent um, within um, to be kind of rescinded? Um, and so we're really starting to embed those principles and those values um, into our working process. And so these kind of discussions have started to kind of, um, we started to kind of narrow down, I guess, and our thoughts are kind of coalescing around a number of key themes. So we're hoping, I'm not going to kind of jump the gun here, but I know we're going to talk about this in a moment. Um, but this is really focusing on themes around collaboration and labour, space and place, equity, inclusion and access, interdependence, care, kinship and well-being, um, and demystification and communication. And we have an example of that last one that's, that's coming up in a moment. Yeah. Before we get to that, um, in the kind of preparation and in the thinking that we've done about how we might collaborate, communicate, be together while we're apart, in a sense, we've obviously looked at the landscape of what's out there because there are many online platforms and tools available. And um, some of them are actually quite promising and interesting and others, um, well, they're a bit they're problematic in many different ways. I think it's, it's fair to say that there's a lot of effort being put in and a lot of sincerity by a whole bunch of different people around the world with different motivations. And so we've put, we've kind of gone through very corporate ones where you kind of, they're, they're really there for the kind of specific goal fulfillment. If we have a task, we need to meet in some way and actually um, work towards um, a common goal that then has an output. But there's others that are maybe much more, more open and allow um, kind of, or, or already thinking in the in the world of kind of um, serendipity informality, there's examples like Gather Town, which you see towards the uh, um, the right hand side in the middle, which is um, kind of fun little thing where you can walk around in this uh, 2.5D world, and then whenever there's a kind of critical mass of little avatars on a screen, then uh, windows pop up. Uh, video windows and you can start having a conversation with one another. Uh, there's others that are initiated by uh, architecture schools such as Taubman College at the top left, which is a virtual studio environment, which kind of encourages people also to contribute to the actual building of the world. And then there's things like that might not Im immediately seem to be a hybrid environment like uh, Spotify's listening together mode. But in a, in a sense, it does already bring together physical spaces and experiential aspects through this, um, this digital platform. And so we're kind of thinking it doesn't immediately have to be something that goes into um, a 3D representation of a physical space and puts you in there with a little avatar. Sometimes much simpler and, and kind of seemingly less spatial things can actually be spatially far more potent and integrate you as um, as a body, as somebody that is kind of in this space, experiencing, connecting to others through their sensory modalities in a way that potentially some of the the, the other the the other projects that you see here might not quite achieve, even though there's they seem to be doing everything right in a sense. Um, I think we should skip these next three slides because we don't have any time left. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go straight to the party. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And so, I'll talk about um, it just to start. If, you know, or you can go, go for it. Uh, I, I don't mind. I mean, it just to kind of follow on from, from this last point that I made. In order for us to get started, we kind of thought, well, we're not going to go immediately programming this, this huge, big hybrid world. Let's go with something really, really simple that already exists and uh, be quite inventive. And in all of this, we have to say that the idea of doing, as you can see here, a hub in a spreadsheet, which is Google Google Docs spreadsheet, is not something that we've invented. We, we took this from about a year ago. There was a, an article, somebody ran a party in a spreadsheet to see if, if people would interact with one another in this really in, um, unconventional way. And it was quite successful. You can still find it online if you Google it. So we thought, we're going to adopt this and we're going to use a spreadsheet and the capacity of a spreadsheet to have tabs as rooms to form a space for interaction. And so we've set one of these up. You see the um, the front door here that kind of introduces you to this little this little world, gives you some house rules, um, welcomes you and um, introduces you to what the spreadsheet uh, wants you to do and what, or what we would like you as collaborators to do in this. 
So this is an example of one of them, the coat rack, where you kind of come in, you, you see the coat rack, you hang up your coat, and then you get started um, in collaborating with us and with others. And the, the nice thing about a platform like this is that it can be both synchronous and asynchronous, as in there can be a bunch of people in this spreadsheet at any given time and have conversations in real time, but you can also just park thoughts there, leave, and then return later on. And others might have now commented on your thoughts or put something else here that you would like to um, speak to. So yeah, I mean, I think that's um, one of the things maybe we can just close with is that we, over the next month, we've been developing this spreadsheet for the past couple of weeks. And over the next month, we're going to be hosting a workshop series with a series of engagement partners. Some of you might be listening or watching and um, that the party of the hub in the spreadsheet will be the basis of. So um, if you do want to get involved, please just contact us. Our emails are um, at the bottom of that lovely slide. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. We're looking forward to a conversation. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, that was really, really interesting. Um, so now we've got about just under 10 minutes, I think, for um, a bit of a QA. and a um, and if people do have any questions from the audience, please do put them in the chat and I'll do my best to, to put them all forward. And we may not have time for all of them, depends how many we get. Um, so actually, first of all, I wanted to bring maybe Mike back into the conversation. Um, and um, I So um, how does the, the Hybrid Domes project um, contribute to Swicton's inclusion and diversity agenda? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because um, I think full domes have been dominated by the science sort of community for, for a long time now. And uh, that's, that's often been to do with, well, actually, back in the 50s was all about the sort of space race and, uh, you know, with, with, with Russia and stuff, certainly in America the number of domes that were built just to engage communities in that sort of you know, big, bigger picture uh, is how they're, why they're all there. But I think more recently, as there's been a kind of revolution in, in the production of new work, new licensing models, new technologies, which have democratized that process just means that the making stuff is, is, is a lot more kind of, kind of interesting, great opportunities there. But, but also if you look at where these domes physically are, it's really quite interesting. Um, Devonport, where the market hall sits, is one of the um, you know, the highest areas of multiple deprivation in, in the UK. And you know, strategically, it, it fits uh, Rio's uh, social agenda for, for inclusion, but also it becomes a device for, um, quite a large device, an instrument for engagement. And so you look at the the intention for engaging the communities around um, the full dome, that full dome. It's similar maybe to Montreal where uh, the dome itself was in a seriously impoverished and problematic area, um, lovingly known as Cracklandia uh, for a while. Uh, it's certainly not about gentrification, but, but it is about in engaging in um, real social kind of problems by, and I, by, by sort of sharing knowledge and by giving opportunities. But also in this context, I think the Hybrid Hubs network brings those kind of concerns which are very local into an international kind of space um, and certainly those discussions that we've had as part of this development process have been really kind of engaged with by those other um, international participants as well um, so yeah i think there's th th there's a big shift going on in the full dome community about who the who its audiences are and how it does engage with those audiences uh, and in one sense the pandemic has made them question the whole kind of you know, the model of being a venue. Um, and this, I think, is really becoming quite useful. I mean, the, the history of hybrid stuff goes, you know, goes goes way back. And it's, it really has just brought it into sharp focus, um, this kind of particular circumstance we're living through. Does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so to, to kind of broaden that to to the rest of to the Collaborative Futures team, um, you talk about radical inclusion within your work around this. Um, how does that what sort of form is that taking? I know you're just starting out on, on um, researching for this project, but, but how are you approaching that? 
Who'd like to start with that? Do you want me to? Molly? Sure, yeah. Um, so part of this is that we, um, I think a part of the, the methodology is that we're not, we're not sure what we're going to get out of this. Um, and in that way, we don't know what a hybrid hub needs to be. We don't really know exactly what it's going to be. We don't know how tangible it needs to be. We don't understand what that mix looks like. And I think that is a principle that a lot that enables us to keep it very open and actually demonstrate that we have space for people to really impact the evolution of the idea of what hybridity might mean. Um, so that's one of the kind of baseline principles that I think informs the work um, that is really, really core and really important. And then secondly, we're, we have, um, you know, been pretty explicit about reaching out across many different sectors so that we have a truly interdisciplinary project and cross-disciplinary project. All of us on the core team sit across sectors to begin with and sit across different disciplines as our kind of core starting point. And that in itself is enabling us to really have conversations in different ways. Um, and then a third strategy is actually within the way that we're setting up the spreadsheets and the, and the house rules around the spreadsheets. Those have been collectively developed um, over a series of conversations that have taken place over the last year. And those house rules are things that will are, are providing the social infrastructure for enabling that idea of radical inclusivity to remain throughout the project. Um, and as soon as you begin to kind of, and those house rules might change and that's completely fine, but they're collectively authored and collectively adapted if they need to. So just keeping that kind of open mind within the house rules themselves are, are, are really key to how we're working around um, ensuring that we keep that kind of radical inclusivity at the core. Did anyone else want to come in on that? Um, I think just just to add to the to the points that Molly's just just made is that in, in terms of us not knowing exactly, I think there's um there's reason to that. Uh, in the sense of, you know, the very spirit of what, what we're about in being truly collaborative and truly inclusive. There's a whole, you know, a whole host of, of, of things, of people, of themes that we're, we might not be thinking of or that we immediately have our own thoughts about. But this is not just for us. This is supposed to be for a very diverse community of people. And so we're really interested to learn and to hear hear more from, from everyone who wants to get engaged with this, even if they feel that in the first instance, you know, well, what do I have to say to this? Well, you know, you have everything to say to this because you're a person, you might want to use this, therefore you should have a voice here. And so we've kept it kind of open also in a, uh, to be able to accommodate this. And so when Molly makes points about collective authorship, it really truly should be that and that you don't need to have a, spe a specific degree or a specific discipline that you're coming from. This is something where we're, we're almost more interested often to hear from folks that, that think they don't immediately have something to say. And that's something that then will trigger our own thinking or thought process and, and lead us to, to imagine and to consider things that might not even have been on the table to start with. And like one, I think one great example of, you know, anybody can partake is that mm -hmm. in the spreadsheet, for example, everyone is anonymous. Mm -hmm. So it does, it completely levels the, levels the playing field, let's say, when there's anonymity at the core. So you don't necessarily know who you're talking to when you're in the spreadsheet, adding things to it or what you're, who you're responding to. And that kind of brings down this idea that there's some kind of hierarchy of, of knowledge or expertise, you know, mm -hmm. and everything is accepted and that anonymity just allows you to actually take some critical distance, I think, in a really productive way. And I guess sort of, um, not exactly moving on from that, but I'm, I'm quite intrigued because you have so many different people within the uh, collaborative future. So how are you um, working together to produce something like this this hub in a spreadsheet, which is, sounds like a really intriguing idea, and I'd be really fascinated to see how it works out. Um, well, we've been doing um, 
We've been doing weekly meetings for, I mean, the, the, the core team on the screen here are pretty much in constant contact. First of all, we, we work really closely together anyways. And then we've been having weekly meetings to kind of begin to organize ourselves and a little, give us a little bit more structure. Um, we all live very fragmented lives and the people that we're working with in, in the network are also you know, doing a thousand different things. So one of the things is actually um, really making sure that the participation that you, the, the way that you want to participate is what you have the capacity to, to do, the true capacity to yeah. do. So some people might have less, some people might have more, and we view it more of this kind of organism that some people will pick up things when other people actually don't have the time or space. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's been really productive. And I mean, we've been having these conversations. You know, I've never met Fiona in person. <laughs> We've been working together. I mean, we've worked at the Bartlett together for years. We've never met in person. So our existence and our relationships have grown over the, having to share things in a different kind of way in order to make sure that the project keeps going. And then we've had, um, we've had a couple of different meetings with some of the more expanded core team that's not here today um, that are more or less like every few weeks. And mm -hmm. so there's a kind of rhythm to the way that we're working together. Um, and then we're doing more or less termly meetings with the wider network, which we've only had one of those meetings so far. Yeah. But there is something in that kind of, I'm, I'm going to hand over to, to Mah sorry, Claire, I was interrupting. I was just going to hand over to you with a kind of a nice little segue that I thought of, because there is a kind of, there is an element of messiness in, in what we're doing. And I think that that is something that we can be quite productive, but it means that everyone has to be very tolerant and open and understanding, caring to others, because, you know, the, these times are extraordinary. And we're all really busy. And I was just wondering, Claire, do, do speak, do, do say something. But I was kind of thinking Mahalia's interest lies in, in messiness. So there might be something that she would like to say to that. I think the messiness, but I think also it's, it's really important that the values that are at the heart of this are the ones that we are embedding in our process as well. It, we've got to be showing that care, you know, that care that you just spoke about, the equity, the inclusion, all of these values are really important and they have to be practiced as well as um, kind of Im embedded, I suppose, in the, in the project. Um, Mahalia, do you, do you want to say something briefly on messiness? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm really excited to be uh, involved with this because, yeah, I think there is such a kind of rigid nature to, I think, sometimes these kinds of platforms in these kinds of situations where we have to almost take turns to speak and things. So the idea that we can kind of start creating a different landscape where, you know, there's more just a, a kind of broader spectrum for people to kind of collaborate, interact um, is something that, yeah, I'm really excited for and I think is necessary, really necessary. And I think that's a really good note to finish on. I have gone over very slightly, so I apologise for that. But thank you so much. It's been absolutely fascinating to hear about both the Hybrid Hubs project and the Hybrid Dome pro project. And so thank you all very much.